Okay, these are some more problems from section 4.5, so we'll kind of do these kind of quickly because we've done spent a couple of days on these, so I'll kind of give you the shorter version of how to do these. Uh, if I look at this first one, number 18, I can tell right away my amplitude is going to be 1. I have nothing in front of here, so my period's still going to be 2 pi because B is 1, and so, so to speak. Uh, so 2 pi over 1 is just 2 pi, so my period's 2 pi. So all I have basically is looks like a horizontal shift, so I'll just draw a quick graph over here. And again, I'll just sketch this. And this would be, could be 1. This could be negative 1 for my period, being 1. And, I'm sorry, my amplitude, excuse me, the amplitude. This is y, this is x. And I can mark this at 2 pi because my period is 2 pi. And remember, I've got to divide that into four equal parts, so I'll just divvy that up into pi. pi. And this would be pi over 2. And this would be 3 pi over 2. And we just put our four points in. Remember, the sine starts at 0. You can check that out from your unit circle as we did. So sine is 0, 0. It goes up 1, except I've got a shift over here, so I do have a horizontal shift. This is a horizontal shift. So this is going to be pi over 2 to the right, so actually I'm going to start over here. And this is pi over 2. So I'll mark this. And I'm going to have to go a little bit farther, so this would be basically, if this is pi over 2, this would be 3 pi over 2. Uh, and this is like 4 pi over 2, so this would be 5 pi over 2. So I just shift over pi over 2. So instead of starting at 0, I start at pi over 2, and then I do my same. Go up 1, back to 0, down 1, back to 0, and that's all you have to do. And then you can graph it, sketch it out pretty fast like that. So not a lot to do for a nice sketch, okay? Okay, that's all you have to do. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at number 20. Uh, number 20 would draw, draw the, or write the equation first. Y equals the sine, and that's going to be 2x, okay, minus pi over 2. Now, again, we don't have a vertical, there's no vertical shift over here, so we're not adding anything, and there's, there's not an amplitude change, so my amplitude's going to be 1. But I am going to have, I got some stuff going on over here, and it always has to be x by itself, so I wanted to get rid of that too. So I'll write y equals the sine, and I'm going to, I, I'm going to factor out this 2. I've got to get rid of this 2 here. So what I'm going to do in order to factor it out is I'll try to get a 2 over here, so it's a little bit easier for me to deal with that. I could divide this by 2. And I could divide this by 2, which would be like multiplying by 1 half, but it's a little bit more complicated for me to think of it like that. So I'm going to write this as 2x minus, and I got pi over 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this by 2. So if I multiply the top by, by 2, I'll multiply the bottom by 2. And what's 2 times 2? 4. So that's what I've got. Now you can always check this. If I reduce this, 2 over 4 is 1 half, so it's the same thing. So what I've done now is I figured out a way to get this 2 out. It's a little bit easier to see. So y equals the sine. And then if I factor 2 out of both these terms, 2 comes out of the first term and leaves it with my x, and that's what I want. And if I take a 2 out of here, I get minus, I took the 2 out, pi over 4. So I think you can see now that we have a period that's going to be a little bit different. Remember, we figure out the period period equals 2 pi over b. Okay, that's going to be 2 pi over, and what's b? b is going to be 2, so the period is just pi. Okay, and then I have a shift of uh, pi over 4. And remember, when I talked this, about this before, whenever you have your period, if you want to find out what your subintervals are, just divide your period by 4. So it looks, my sub, it looks like my subintervals will be the same as my vertical shift. And this is a vertical shift. It just happens to work out that way in this particular case. That's, I'm sorry, horizontal shift. Excuse me, horizontal shift. Same as my horizontal shift. It's an HS. Okay. Make that a little darker. So there's your horizontal shift. And there's my change in period. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw my graph. I don't have to do too much with the amplitude because that's going to be plus or minus one. So I can go over here. There's my y, there's my x, there's my 1, there's my negative 1. 
and now my period is pi. So I'll put pi over here, and I'll divide that into four spots for my subdivisions. That works out real nice. This is pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, and this would be one more fourth, so that'd be 5 pi over 4. And the reason why I need this is because I do have a shift of pi over 2, I'm sorry, pi over 4, and that's going to be to the right. It's a horizontal shift, and it's this way because it's it's opposite that side, so that means it's a negative. So my shift is pi over 4. So it's still the sign, so instead of starting at 0, I start at pi over 4. So this is my shift, and this is my whole period. It's going to be from here to here. And then I just put my four points in. Remember, I start with 0, and I go up 1, back to 0, down one, and there you go. That's how you could do it real quick. I know you can use a table of values, and that will work also to give you the coordinates. But this is just a sketch, and we can see pretty much what's happening. If we understand that we just have a period change, and then we have a horizontal shift. All right, that's number 20. And let's take a look at one more. Let's try to do number 22. I have room for 22. Let's do 22 over here. Yep, yeah, make room over here, 22. And I'll draw the equation over here. And that's going to be y equals 3. y equals 3. And that's going to be a uh, sine. Uh, 2x minus pi over 2. Well, almost the same as the last one, isn't it? It is. Okay. 2x minus pi over 2. So that's the same as the last one. I got the 2x. So this is this is actually the same. Except I just have a period of 3. That's the only difference. So I'll say y equals 3 Sign, I want to get the 2 out, so I'll do the same thing. That's going to be 2x minus 2 pi over 4. Multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And I'll just take out the 2. And then I can take out this 2, and I've got x minus pi over 4. So that's the same kind. So 22 is the same as very similar, except I have a period of 3. That's the only difference. So I get my period equals 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So pi over 4 would be my subintervals, and I've got a shift of pi over 4. This is a horizontal shift to the right. Okay, so I'll draw my graph over here. Now I do have a period of 3, so I'll try to make it a scale because i got room. Like this. There's my y, there's my x. Okay? And I need pi, and I need to go a little bit farther, so I'll call this pi, because my period's pi. So this would be pi over 2. There's pi over 4. There's 3 pi over 4, so this is pi over 2. Pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. And if you think of this, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, and this would be, again, 5 pi over 4, and I try to make that the same length. 5 pi over 4. And again, because I have a horizontal shift to the right of pi over 4, then I'm going to start over here. Then I'm going to go to here. That will be one period or one full cycle. Now what I have to do is I have to put in, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, because those are the, the period. And then I'll just put my four points in. This is zero. That's my starting point. My next point, my next fourth, is usually one, but in this case it's going to be three because I've got a period of three, or an amplitude of three, pardon me. Back to zero, and this would be negative three here, and back to zero. So it's a lot steeper because of the period, and I did draw it to kind of scale, to scale so that kind of helps, I hope. 
you see the perspective of what's going on here. Comes down like this, down to negative three, back up, and there's your curve. And that's one cycle. So again, you see we started three zeros in the sign. Zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, except that negative one is multiplied, or that one is multiplied by a three, because we have a three in front. Okay. So there's your graph. And like I said, I'm just sketching these out. I'm not using a ruler just to get these things done. So you can see that you can do it pretty fast, and they're not that hard as long as you know how to analyze uh, your equation. Hope those help.